The Trains franchise is now 20 years old, and to commemorate this anniversary, it's time to take a look back on the first ever Trains games, the original Trains and Ultimate Trains Collection, also known as UTC. These games were released in 2002, and were pioneers for their time. So, let's dive into their secrets. This is the UTC Iceberg. Demo Version this is a demo version that contains a fraction of the content and only one route, that being City and Country USA. It's free for download and can be found online. Interesting it uses the GUI from UTC. When quitting, this screen flashes on it right here. 2016 free offer. In 2016, for the franchise's 15th anniversary, a free trial for about a month or so was offered for the full original version of Trains. After that, it became pay to play until someone in the comments just uploaded the files to Mediafire. Reference Database This is a website owned by Oren that miraculously hasn't gone down yet. It has many reference photos, information pages and more. Most use real life photos, but some use train surrenders from UTC, or just no photos at all. Trains Paint Shed Paint Shed was a feature of UGC that let players create their own simplified reskins of several trains, which kickstarted the modding community by a rather fair amount. This feature would stay in the game series all the way up until Trains 2009. However, to compensate, the blanks that were used for Paint Shed would be made drivable without any editing through Content Manager, although this was withdrawn in Trains 2010. PEV Soft PEV Soft was a series of Trains asset creation tools made to streamline the process of asset creation. I use these tools almost 24-7 when reskinning and I have a download link in the description where you can get the tools. Original Root Names The beloved routes we all know and love were all renamed for UTC in 2004. British Midlands was originally called Britain. Outback Australia was Gumtree Australia, which was called Australia. City and Country USA was called North American Plains, which was called North America. The Black Forest was German Festivals. Electric Commuter was British Commuter. And Winter in the Alps was called Alpine Pass. Original Asset Names In, U in UTC, many of the assets were mercifully renamed to the names we have today. The old ones had sorting by class instead of railway, inconsistent naming, obscure naming, and the absolute disaster that is the Urz Eid Hoppers. I mean, just look at this. Realistic Derailments Take a look at the latest-ish trains game, TRS-19. This is what a train crash looks like. However, if we go back in time to 2001, this is what accidents looked like. Smoke from the ground, the train keeps moving, the engine slowly turns off and there is no X marking above the train. Plus, you can ride in the train and even in the cab as it crashes. This was scaled back in 2004 where the smoke was removed, a red exclamation mark was added on top of the train as it derailed. And I think that the camera would also default to free roam when you crashed, as it does in every game since. Game Trailers Here are several trailers for both games. Enjoy!
Service Pack 3 Scenarios In Train Service Pack 3, a version of the original release, scenarios were added. This included Biraburi Yards, Blue Sky Steel and Alco Pulse Railroad. These were expanded to the one seen in UTC. Oran Crocodile These were downloadable assets made in collaboration with fine art models that were hosted on the train's download station and are still up to this day. Obviously. You know how the Okami CNO Kanahua is the pinnacle of trains realism nowadays? This was the closest thing to date back then. It was the first ever train to use animated wheels and trains, a very important feature to be used for Trains 2004 when steam engines were introduced. These locos were shown heavily in trailers of the game. There were three variants, the brown, green and green Schweizer Lithuizel variants. F7 Hot Rod this was a similar downloadable asset, however this was fully made by the brew crew. The whole idea of this was for an unrealistic super fast train for people to shoot down the line. Its description is a treat. Here are a couple excerpts. Although the F7 has been proven as capable traction for regular passenger and diesel traffic, many were skeptical of its ability to raise the pulse with any above average performance. Oren launched an exciting new livery, demonstrating the customizable advantages of trains. Horsepower, approximately 9,000 HP, still needs more. Engine, it's supercharged. Max speed, 400 miles an hour, claimed. Absolute gold. <laughs> if you try and download this asset today on the DLS, its main texture files will show up as transparent, and I had to do a lot of image tweaking to get it properly working on TRS-19. Fan creators have also made a B unit and coaches for this loco. The loco has the signatures of the brew crew on the side. You might be asking what the brew crew is. Well... <laughs> brew crew. This is just a slang name for the original team of Orin developers. That's all. Electric Commuter is a clone. Many parts of Electric Commuter are ripped straight from British Midlands, such as the viaducts, some stations, and lakes. The end of the line is supposed to link up to British Midlands too. If you think I have any idea how it would join up, then you are wrong. Robe River Iron is real. The Robe River Iron route is the largest in the entirety of UTC, and for a while was the largest trains route ever created. But did you know that the line itself is real? It is known as the Hammersley and Robe River Railway, an isolated iron ore export railway in the Pilbara region of Western Australia. The route showcases the line from Mesa J Mine to Port Dampier. It was constructed in 1966 and is currently operated as Rio Tinto, now incorporated into a much larger network. Something notable is that it is but a stone's throw away from the Goldsworthy and Mount Newman railways operated by BHP, which operated the world's longest train to ever run. VW Jetta and other real cars. The regular cars found in Winter in the Alps are Volkswagen Jetta A2s built in 1984. Many other cars are prototypical too, this is just an example of one. Missing Alphabet Characters In Trains Content Manager, Database and more, Missing Alphabet Characters are substituted by this diamond and question mark symbol. That is all. <laughs> content Dispatcher and Content Foundry These were two programs that when combined with Content Manager you could use for asset creation. Content Foundry for making config files, Content Dispatcher for making the CTP files, and Content Manager for installing them into trains. UTC also came with a free version of GMAX, a 3D modeling software that was used for the base assets and many more. That's why many ancient assets look like they were made by Warren themselves. GMAX would become 3D Max, now owned by Autodesk, and the other two were merged into Content Manager. VR and V-Line logos on British Midlands. In the Trains Driver 2 trailer, you can see these S-Classes on Rossler Fail, which is basically the same thing as British Midlands, it uses most of the same assets and is loot. However, in the UTC trailer, if you look really closely, there they are on British Midlands. Database Tunnels. On several database entries, 
this tunnel is seen in the photos. It's completely unique and is not available for download anywhere I can find. They look fairly similar to these tunnels seen in a Mojave subdivision packed in Trains 12. Oren made MSDS add-ons. With the release of MSDS in 2001, Oren decided to release a bunch of Trains assets for the game. This was known as the Regional Add-on Pack. Many of the assets in this pack weren't released for trains, such as this RDC. I'll go more in depth about this in a bit. In 2002, there was a free download for an MSDS converted DD40X, as mentioned in this Transim forum thread and this photo. MSDS Paint Shed This was an application that was released with a regional train pack that let you simply reskin assets as you wished. It was basically the same program as before, but for MSTS. This also came with some more content imported from trains such as the BB1500, Class 50, NoHab, and these freight wagons. Class 37 box could be real. In the original game's GUI, you can see how when you hover over the rail yard tab, this 3D vector render is shown. It depicts a Class 37 in a model train box. But could this be a real box? These were the closest designs I could find to it. One might be out there. The Evil Dark Cow The Evil Dark Cow was most likely another marking from the Buru Crew, which appears on the back of the Building Warehouse EDC asset. However, something weird is that it says Warehouse 8. So, where are 1 to 7? Kind of related, but there is also the Rocket Cow asset, just a cow that was converted to a locomotive and given the strength to go at mark speed. Yes, it's an actual official or an asset. Original Water In the original version of Trains, water was quite primitive. The colours were controlled the same way skies were, and the edges of the water had this ugly rippling effect. Thankfully, this was revamped in UTC. It looks far better. American signals in the Black Forest. In the route the Black Forest, these signals are used due to no mainland European signals being present in the game. Except, they are in the game. These Polish PKP signals here and these other ones that are impossible to pronounce. In Trains iPad and Trains Driver 2, the route was rebuilt, and with the rebuild, the USA signals were swapped for the PKP signals. Pilbara Hopper Couplings the loaded and unloaded Pilbara ore hoppers have different missions as shown here around the couplers, and a slight difference in the chassis textures. Unreleased GP units. In UTC, there are three GP38-2 units, Canadian National, Milwaukee Road and Seaboard System. However, in the MSTS regional add-on pack, there are several more listed, Sioux Line, Canadian Pacific, Central, Delaware and Hudson, and High Hood units for Norfolk Southern and Southern Railroad. And seen in this one wallpaper, there are even more. One for Union Pacific, Montana Rail Link, I think, I, I honestly have no idea what this is, CSX, Burlington Northern, and Southern Pacific. Similarly, there are additional SD units. In the UTC, there is an ACSF SD40-2, BN SD40-2, and CN SD40-2. However, in the MSDS regional pack, there is a Conrail SD40-2. Most of these have no photos or screenshots at all, so who knows what they looked like. Also on the Oren website, you can see this Rock Island GP unit. Were there any more of these? Why weren't they released? What happened to the files? Outback Australia's creation scene and trailer. There is this little clip in the UTC trailer showing the making of the route. It is only visible for a fraction of a second. Detlev 20 Assets In much of the promo images for trains, there are many assets that aren't found under or and on the DLS. However, they are still on there. The account Detlev 20 has uploaded a ton of these assets. These assets are the Two Green Crocodiles, an SBB Trans Europe Express DMU, a DB VT 11.5, several BR212 shunters, a BR103 electric loco, two additional BR218 liveries, and an SNCF CC72000. Two of these were used for PEVsoft and UTC program icons, the BR103 for Quick Shadows and the CC72000 for Edit Quid. How did this guy get access to the files? Was he an employee? Was this even an official account? Edited Assets 
In UTC, there are three edited assets. These are Sign RR Mines 2, the Red Hen, and the Bogey for the Red Hen. This begs the question, why are they edited? Artifacting. Many old graphics cards struggled to render trains. It was a game far ahead of its time. This would end up in yellow, black or white artifacting in the game and would hamper the experience significantly. This was such a problem that a huge chunk of the manual was dedicated to it, as seen here. National Park Station is real. National Park Station is seen on the Outback Australia route, however it actually existed. It was on the Adelaide Wolsey Railway line between an unknown date to the 23rd of September 1987 when the State Transit Authority of South Australia suspended passenger services to bridge border back to Bel Air. There are no photos that I can find online of the real life station. Suicide Nod in City and Country USA. Before I continue, here is a number for Lifeline. In this corner of City and Country USA, you can see this man facing out across the void. Was this a subtle way to communicate a message from one of the devs? Was it predicting the financial suicide that Orin had with Fury in 2007? Was it added due to an expected financial suicide Orin could have if Trains was a failure? Or was it not for that? Trains user Hyobofa MR has theorised that maybe he's just looking at an ore, looking into the future, or maybe as a map trap. A map trap is an intentional error or easter egg to make sure that no one steals a map. Jay Foreman has a fantastic video on this, link in the description. I'm probably overthinking this, as in Trains Driver 2 when they made more baseboards, the person is still there and there is no cliff. Extra Class 37s In UTC there are these two Class 37 locos that were never seen again, BR Class 37 Coal-C and BR Class 37 Yellow-C. These used different meshes to the regular two, and they were made by Peekabird. The Cole 37 has been completely remastered and is available for download. The original is nowhere to be found, but a blue and Dutch variant of it are on the DLS, and the yellow Dutch C37 is completely gone. Auron Ground Texture This is a ground texture that is just the Auron logo plastered again and again. It was only seen in UTC since it had pretty much no use at all. Maybe it could have been used as a town square of sorts, but I highly doubt anyone used it. Perhaps used as a debug tool? I don't know. GUI Assets Much of the UTC GUI has textures that show assets that were never released, such as this warehouse, these houses, and I think these trees. Database Models in the database, there are several links towards 3D models. Most of these are of trains that have already been released, however some like the Swedish T-44 have links to 3D models. The links do not work at all. That begs the question, did they ever work? Were they even made? Wallpaper Assets and Errors On the Orin website, there are several wallpapers made for download. These have many unreleased things, such as the tunnels from earlier. I'll now list them off. The box cover route shows off different ground textures, roads, fences, crossing lights, tracks, trees, bins and buildings. Moving on we can see here a British Rail Class 52 Western, available on the DLS but made by Oren, with unreleased fences, building and drums. Then there is the bridge, which shows off a new bridge design and an incredibly weird looking Class 37. Some items are basically a big stack of locos and scenery assets. Most most of these I'll get into later. In the tunnel wallpapers there is something very special to many of my viewers from America. We'll get into that later. On the bridge wallpaper for the CNSD40 you can see how the running numbers are completely broken. I think the texture was swapped with one for a V200. Reskinned assets for winter in the Alps. This is a big bombshell that barely any of you have even noticed. Almost all of the assets from Winter in the Alps are reskins from other routes. The stations and freight depot have outback platforms. The building, building on the rural station is a reskin of an outback station. The power lines are reskinned from British Midland slash electric commuter. The concrete tunnels are reskinned from Outback Australia. The stone bridges are taken from British Midlands. The fences and relay boxes are reskinned, although I'm not too sure what routes they came from. And the list just goes on and on and on and on and on. Multi-Industry Tutorial 
This is a route that can be found on the DLS that was made to test out the multi-industry functionality around the time that the second service pack was being created. It consists of a wide junction, three industries, a line ending at the map's edge and an incomplete loop. Database photos were used in production. Much of the coaches and freight wagons in the game, particularly the Queensland ones, are based on ones found in the asset database. Some of these are in different paint schemes, which begs the question to why we didn't get the original schemes. DEU Roundhouse This is an asset that was theoretically made for the Black Forest, however was never incorporated into any route, possibly due to space limits on the route or time constraints. There is no logical place on the map for it to be placed, so it does make sense to cut it from the map. Instructional videos Included in UTC, there are many video clips to be found that are mostly tutorials. Some are examples of features. One includes an entire unseen route that has never been released, named the One Hour Route. All videos together are incredibly long, so here are the highlights. Hi, this is Rob. This is how we make the tracks in Surveyor. Click where you want it to start them. And you can complete the scene by painting textures underneath the tracks. And that's all there is to it. Pieces can be laid across mountains that you've created. And that's all there is to it. With the terrain tools, you can lower the valley a little deeper and add water and environmental textures until you're happy with the scene. And finally, we'll just add some trees to finish it off. And that's all there is to it. Now I'm going to show you a tunnel. Complete the scene with some textures, and that's all there is to them. And now for the paint panel. We can actually fine tune and, and really do a bit of arty stuff, an aesthetically pleasing place to be. I'm going to just fiddle here. No plan, I'm just going to try and make it look good. I'm just fiddling and underneath the river, it's much nicer if it's darker there. There you go. The camera system is found in the tools menu. Simply select the camera icon, click on the map in the area that you want the camera to be in, move it into position, and there it is. Here we see a place tracking camera in position. When a train comes within a certain distance, the view automatically changes to track the train going past. You can place as many of these cameras in your map as you wish to create stunning viewing effects.
This is Bruce inside the cab of an F unit. And as Rob would say... And that's all there is to it. Crocodile raw footage. The crocodile footage seen in the trailer is heavily edited with some scenes being shown for a millisecond. However, there was an entire showcase for it made. This showcase has its own route, including Australian track assets. Either this is a super early beta for Winter in the Alps, or a custom route made for this promo. Here is the full footage. Blue Sky has a HO model. The station at Blue Sky on City and Country USA was based on a HO model made by the German modeling company Tyco. I'm not sure what year this was released, but my best guess is possibly the 1980s or 90s. Trains' original production involved going around many model railway clubs asking for ideas, so this could have been implemented by someone who wanted a bit of their club to be famous. The model is named Ali Station spelt A-R-L-E-E, -E, and includes benches, bins, and posters. It can easily be found on eBay. I also found this West German model that could be a bootleg since it has far less detail and is more closer to the blue sky in the game. It could be the reference model, perhaps. It's made by a company called Quick Plastic. I don't know if they're still active. EMD Deltic. In the weather demo, you can see this Deltic emitting EMD diesel engine noises. This could mean that this was the first ever engine sound made for trains. It makes sense when you realise that the launch icon for the game is an engine that uses that sound, the ATSF SD40-2. In the control trailer, as seen before, you can see that this ATSF F7 also has the sound. The one hour route. This has already been discussed, so let's just move on. Queensland Passenger Beta. On the website .ru, you can find many smuggled assets. It's basically just a pirate bay of trains. Some of these are internal Auron assets which have never ever before been released to the public. One of these is Queensland Passenger, a beta version of the Queensland route. It starts from the four track terminal and ends at the Australia Zoo signs. Auron-9. On one of the wallpapers you can see this loco. It's an Auron-9, a very rare asset and a train type that is near and dear to many of my viewers. This was never released. However, if you look at the MSCS regional add-on pack, you can see two extra Dash 9s. Thing is, the model is completely different and has been updated significantly. Tristan Station. Teesside Station Rural, one of the stations from Winter in the Alps, has an unused station sign texture called sign.tga. It's this, a blue station sign with a white outline that says Tristan. Weirdly, no stations on the Winter in the Alps route actually bear the name Trissen. However, there is a town in Liechtenstein called Trissen. That country is in the dead middle of both Switzerland and Austria. Remove the Europe region. Grab some popcorn, this one's going to be big. In UTC, if you go to the surveyor mode, you can see that there is a Europe region. This includes these assets shown on screen here. What if I were to tell you that all of these assets were never used in any Auron route. There would have been some sort of Europe region or route planned for the game. The RO Cantonary name for this asset here implies that these would be Romanian, and after comparing it to this image, it would make a lot of sense. The textures contradict this, however, beginning with PL suggesting Poland. The signals back up the Poland claim too. 
There are three versions that correspond to Romania, but four others correlate to Poland, even starting with PKP, the abbreviation for the Polish Railways. But then you have the tracks. The AS49 tracks are of Polish design, since they associate with the ground textures, but the greasy tracks seem to be completely unrelated. Same thing for the tunnels, but not for the bridges. The bridges seem to be a freelance design. The station benches seem to be completely freelance and don't feel very Eastern European. To me they look far more like the Newcastle station seats in New South Wales. There would be no way to track down the phone box. The platform lamp is a rather more worldwide design and St. Anton station doesn't exist in real life. There is a St. Anton um, Arlberg in Austria, but it's a completely different design. Since building library takes itself from St. Anton, we still can't figure out what it was based off of. The likely reason is that it was just freelance. The platforms seem to match Polish stations, but the platforms appear far more darker. But then you have the station names, blue with white text, with a white outline, an Italian design. The same as the Tristan station from beforehand. I created this one snowless version of the Tristan station with the old signs, so this is what it would have looked like. Then you have the rolling stock, possibly it could be the unreleased rolling stock invisible on the logos. Most likely the Pendolino since it had the Italian station signs. Then the M62, it was possibly there for the Polish and Romanian content, as it was a popular Soviet era locomotive. Then you have the Honda Cup, Y1, V100 and all the others. What could have been made with these? Why was it cut? What would the route be called? How big would the route be? What would it look like? What did we never see? When was it cancelled? What was the Europe route? Blank database entries. Many of the database entries appear completely empty or blank. Some have images, some do not. Three lines of code. In the UTC credits, there is a line that says, Three lines of code by Kazis Stepnas. The specific nature of this question certainly raises an eyebrow. Was it an Easter egg? Did the credits creator have a grudge against Kazis, calling him lazy? And what lines of code were they? Midland Mainline slash SJ in the credits. Dry City and Country USA. The North America version of City and Country USA has a lot of differences from the regular version. The river is mostly dry, most bridges are different, the slag pit isn't even a pit, and these hills are missing. While these are very bad differences, there is one positive. At the marshalling yard, there is a new turntable added into the route. It's weird playing with it with all these differences applied. Undercut assets. There are too many for me to talk about, so here are pictures and subtitles of ones that haven't been mentioned yet. LSD credits. This is a theory that the UCC credits were inspired by LSD. I'm quite sure that the only reason that this is due to them looking quite trippy. Maybe it was because Trains was a very surreal experience. I mean, 3D games at the time were quite a new thing. Well, that was quite an anticlimactic end. Hope you enjoyed this video. It took me a very long time to make. I might make a Trains 2004 iceberg for Christmas 2022 since it's turning 18, however there is significantly less cut content for that game. I thought that with this video, you know, I might as well give an extra Christmas present to you viewers. Especially to people who actually use trains. Stay tuned for New Year's folks, something big is coming. Well not as big as this, but it's still coming.